is Taraji P. Henson really getting underpaid in Hollywood? And if so, does this mean that Hollywood is only discriminating against black women as she claims? Over the past month, I know that some of you have seen Taraji's comments about a number of things ranging from how she barely earns any money from her movies, to how she had to deal with terrible working conditions, to how black women and only black women aren't getting paid their fair share in Hollywood. Now when I first heard Taraji discussing this matter, it reminded me of the hot topic regarding how WNBA players are underpaid and how their salary needs to be similar to NBA players. This type of argument uses the women are always oppressed narrative while failing to do a deep dive to understand why there's a pay disparity. And every time those who support WNBA players getting paid as much as NBA players gets educated on how salaries and revenue sharing works in the industry, they get quiet or try to deflect from the topic at hand. But in circling back to Tarachi's comments on how she's not getting paid what she's worth, I think it's worth pointing out that in every movie that Taraji was underpaid to do, she ultimately agreed to do the role for an agreed upon salary. And in my opinion, there are basic principles to having leverage during a salary negotiation with most employers. For example, I know for a fact that if an employer really wants to hire you and they understand that you bring a tremendous value to their organization, they'll typically be extremely accommodating to any requests or demands that you have, more so than others. If an employer really wants you to be part of their organization, then you might be able to get away with certain antics that regular Joes couldn't get away with, all because after all, they need you more than you need them. And at the end of the day, if you're a high value commodity and you don't like the final offer that an employer gives you, you can simply turn it down and wait for the next offer to surface. In my opinion, when it comes to acting within the Hollywood realm, if you aren't as valuable as the powers that be think you are, then you will almost always have to audition for certain roles and you will get lowballed when it comes to getting paid for your work. So how does any of this relate to Taraji P. Henson? In my opinion, when Taraji made her issues with pay about race and gender, she misspoke. I believe that Hollywood has evolved from the days when actors of color weren't even allowed to walk through the front door of an award ceremony that they were being honored for. Nowadays, more women and people of color are getting more opportunities to earn a lot more money for their work in Hollywood. I do believe that when it comes to the mainstream movies that have a lot of earning potential, there aren't that many roles for black women, but I do not think that that's due to discrimination. I do believe that nepotism can come into play. I also believe that certain movie studios want to make certain movies, and they want actors in those movies that can appeal to a worldwide audience. I also think that Hollywood lowballs most of its acting talent when the talent has no leverage to bring to the negotiation table. Let's take Robert Downey Jr. and Chadwick Boseman for example. Robert Downey Jr. has been in the game for many years, yet when he had his fall from grace due to his drug issues, he was definitely lowballed when he played in Iron Man in which he was paid $500,000. He crushed the role of Tony Stark along with his roles in Tropic Thunder and Sherlock Holmes and all of a sudden he has the power to negotiate for better pay and he's making millions upon millions. Chadwick Boseman on the other hand had only been in a handful of movies but nearly all of his movie performances were standout and iconic. Yet for Black Panther he was only paid a few million dollars for his performance. And this is despite Black Panther being one of the highest grossing solo movies in the MCU history. Now if Chadwick Boseman were still alive today I believe that he would be making similar money to those of the top tier MCU stars. But in my opinion, Taraji might not be getting paid as much as other actresses out there because of her perceived value to Hollywood. Now what determines an actor's perceived value? In my opinion, there are three criteria which determines an actor's value and which gives an actor a leverage in the salary negotiations. First, it's their ability to put butts in the seats. And this simply means the actor's ability to draw large crowds to watch whatever TV show or movie they're in, which in turn generates box office sales as well as ad revenue for TV shows. When an actor can bring in money to a project and there's a paper trail that can prove such, then they in turn can have some leverage when it comes to telling an executive what monetary compensation works best for them. Second, an actor's ability to be a team player for the organization. That simply means that if an organization needs a favor from an actor in the form of help with promoting the project, or if the actor is known for being easy for cast and production to work with, or if the actor is willing to take a lower salary in exchange for a percentage for box office sales or higher royalties, then in my opinion, when an actor does this, then they are building connections with the powers that be and they can come to the negotiation table by sharing how they've been a team player in the past. 
This in turn could help the actor get future roles down the line. And third, an actor being officially recognized by an organization and their peers for their hard work. And this is usually done in the form of notable award nominations and wins, like the Emmys, Oscars, Golden Globes, SAGs, and so on. So over the next few minutes, I want to take a look at each of the three criteria for perceived value and apply them to Taraji P. Henson. First, does Taraji have the ability to put butts in deceits? I can acknowledge that Taraji has a very supportive fan base and she has millions of followers on social media. However, I think that her fan base is far from diverse. In Taraji's 40 plus movie appearances, at least 20 of those movies were what I consider to be black movies with a smaller budget. Taraji's top five grossing movies were movies where she had a small part in or she was part of an ensemble cast. Examples of these movies include The Minion Movie, Ralph Breaks the Internet, and the two Think Like a Man movies. Out of the six movies where Taraji had top billing on the cast, three movies, which were Proud Mary, The Best of Enemies, and The Color Purple, were considered box office bombs, while the other three movies were Hidden Figures, Acrimony, and What Men Want, were moderately successful at the box office, with Hidden Figures being Taraji's highest grossing movie at $237 million on a $25 million budget. We also can't overlook Taraji's role as Cookie Lions on the hit TV show Empire. So based on the numbers, Taraji had moderate success when starring in her own TV show, but overall she has limited appeal when it comes to putting butts into movie theater seats, and this could be partly due to her failure to gain a crossover audience. Now if we look at four of the most recognizable and decorated black actresses in Hollywood within the last 25 years, which for me would be Angela Bassett, Viola Davis, Octavia Spencer, and Holly Berry, and we included them in the three criteria, then the following would be true for all of these talented women. One, that they all have a larger and more diverse fan base than Taraji. Two, that they've been in more overall hit movies. Three, they've all even been in superhero movies. And most importantly, four, that they all get paid more than Taraji for their roles. Now, I know that some of you who are listening are wondering why the hell did I choose Halle Berry on this list? I would say that Halle Berry has won her fair share of awards and she has one of the most diverse fan bases out there. But even if you replaced Halle with Regina King, the facts will remain the same. Regina has a more diverse fan base, has been in more hit movies, she's been in a superhero series, and she earns more money than Taraji. Now, of course, one could argue that Taraji was one of the main reasons that people tuned in to see the show Empire. But I would also argue that Empire specifically targeted viewers who were into hip hop and R&B. And viewership of the show went down tremendously over the years. In season one, it was averaging about 17 million. And in season six, it dropped down to about 4 million. So if we eliminate feelings from the discussion, then we can conclude that Taraji being a black woman isn't the sole reason why she doesn't get the money that she feels she deserves. But we should also look at Taraji's ability to be a team player for an organization. With this, I can't really speak to Taraji's history of being a team player, but I do know that for the color purple marketing, she spent a great deal of time talking about how she was underpaid, as well as sharing other horror stories. And many people who wanted to see the movie chose not to do so because of the negativity that was coming from the cast members. Some may even consider Taraji's comments a form of self-sabotage. But at the end of the day, if Taraji signed a contract to do The Color Purple for a certain salary, then she shouldn't turn around and say negative things about the movie after she's collected her money for it. Other movie studios will definitely see how she's conducted herself during The Color Purple press run, and they may avoid doing business with her altogether. And if this is how she is in public, then one can only wonder what Taraji may have said to some of her peers in private. And don't get me wrong, if Taraji and other actresses feel that they're being lowballed and they want to take action about it, then I believe that they should try to fight any injustice. However, I also believe that there's a time and a place for everything, and they should be smart in how they try to fight these things. So in closing, I think that there are legitimate fights to participate in, such as fixing the injustices within the criminal justice system and getting more resources for our communities. But when I think about Taraji and her issues with getting paid in Hollywood, then I also find myself traveling down that rabbit hole. I wonder if Taraji hates Hollywood so much, then why continue to act in it? With all of her money, resources, and influence, she could easily go into other lucrative business ventures that could pay her more than what she's getting paid to act. I wonder if Taraji has ever thought about trying to write or direct some of the movies and TV shows out there. I only wonder this 
Because of the extremely lucrative deals that Shonda Rhimes and Issa Rae received to produce their own content for major networks, and being a jack of all trades in Hollywood can only increase a person's value. And lastly, if the game is rigged for people like Tarashi to fail, then why not try to adapt to the rules of the game instead of complaining why you aren't winning? This is just food for thought, but I'd like to know what you all think about the matter. Do you think that Taraji is being underpaid, or does Hollywood only care about the color green and if their investments can be paid off? Or is it a mix of both? Feel free to leave all comments below in the comment section, and I'll be sure to reply to everybody. Until next time, stay tuned and stay safe. Peace.